we'll get going, you guys. Okay, so um, so what I want to uh, do next is pivot to um, our first. So we, we've talked about um, it, you know general, super broad introduction to disasters. We've talked about broad introduction to a lot of our logistics. Um, the two things we have, the two logistical things we haven't gone over yet, is starting to talk with, uh, uh, start starting to talk about um, uh, maps, geospatial visualizations, and just regular data visualizations. So, so that's what we're talking about now. So now we want to talk about our general um, approach to making figures. So our first activity is to essentially do that. So we have, and this is a module that that turned on this morning. So this is this is another module that you guys will. Uh, Play with and then and then turn in this lab activity essentially uh, by by um, uh, five o'clock this week and Friday. So um, uh, so so this two two fold things here. One, let's start to play with some data and make sure we're comfortable. Uh, you know, starting to to poke around data, and then two, uh, uh, start to get a sense of the broader scope of disasters. You know, in the biggest picture. So for this, um, what we're going to do is you're going to go to a website, sign up for a free account. Anything we do in this class, uh, normally we don't need formal accounts, but when we do, if we do need an account, it is um, it, it's free, right? So you don't don't need to pay anything. We're going to go to this go to this place, uh, establish an account. Then we're going to go query the database, get some of that data, suck it down to our local computer. So we can look at it, play with it, poke around with it, and um, uh, and then start to, to visualize it. Our big picture here is uh, essentially, you know, what's the big story? What, what's, the, what's the large scale story with these disasters? What you'll see when we get going here is I've broken everybody into a group. So everybody's in one region of the world. So rather than doing the whole globe, you're going to do just a subsection of the globe, which will make the data set you can do the whole globe if you wanted to, but it makes it kind of big. And so, so by picking different regions of the world, it makes the data set a little more uh, easier to manipulate in our first, first pass through. Cool? Okay, great. So with that, uh, open up your computer, pop open your computer, and we're going to go to this uh, EM, um, uh, 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 it's called EM dot uh, database. And you can get to there by typing in this address right here, which is public.emdat.be. And so before I start talking, why don't you guys navigate to that website and uh, just do the, the free registration. So we'll take a minute. And, and let me also just note, again, this came up, uh, I don't know, end of last year sometime. So just to be clear, Again, if you guys are new to being on physically on campus, you should be using the CI network. We have three networks in here. Well, there's actually more, but but three three Wi-Fi networks. There's the CI, which is the default, which is the one you should be on. There's also CI Guest. If for some reason something got weird with our CI, uh, 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 yeah, I can probably call it up here so you can see what I'm, you see what I'm talking about. So CI is the one you want to be on. There's also CI Guest that anybody can get on. Uh, and there's also EduRoam. So uh, you guys should all know about EduRoam. Uh, is, have people used EduRoam before or no? Okay. So this is an international network of universities. So the idea is what if we go to a conference at UCLA? What if we go to a conference at San Francisco State, right? My CSUCI credentials won't work. So most, so not all, but, but a large number of universities across the globe have created are a partner in this edu roam and so uh you can go there and use your ci logging credentials and it'll work but let me just explain it's a little bit different for our ci uh log on it's just like going on into our my ci so it's your first name dot last name and then whatever it is three six seven or whatever your number is that's it that's your identity, and then your password. For EduRoam, it's your whole email address. So it's your first dot last name number at 
you know, you see your full email address has to be entered as your identity and then your password. So, um, so I mean, you, you don't have to do that today, but, but just know that if something goes weird with the internet or if you're at, you know, up in Santa Barbara or down in LA, you, you guys have access to EduRome, whatever, whatever campus you're on. And, and, our, and our friends that are coming to visit us, if you have a bud that's at you know, uh, Northridge and comes here, he or she can jump on our network with their Northridge credentials. So, okay, so having said that, uh, take a second, go to the, uh, the EM data, EM dat website and, and, and register before we go on. Okay, everybody good? Everybody got an account set up? Okay, so what are we looking at? So what we're looking at is a very um, important tool. Um, and when we see this with many aspects of ESRM, we see this with fisheries data, we see this with um, protected areas for parks around the world, etc. We, US, have our way of doing it. And for that matter, we, California, have our way of doing it, right? And Mexico has their way of doing it. Um, Nicaragua has their way, Mozambique has their way, right? So, so it becomes a non-trivial thing when we're talking about something like, hey, how many disasters do we have around the globe, right? How many people are impacted? What's the, what, what's the effect of this? It's a non-trivial thing to, to pull together all these statistics. So what typically happens is uh, a center, usually at a university, Sometimes a nonprofit, but but usually they, they, they're they're based out of universities. People like you and I start doing this, and we're doing this for a while. I'm like, God, I assigned you guys a lab activity. Go pull in all the data from Africa and South America and all this stuff, and we and we just struggle with it for years. We finally figure out a way that's kind of right, and then we publish a paper or two about it, and then people are like, Oh, that's pretty cool. Can I see the data? Can I see your data on disasters? And then you're like, well, yeah, okay, I guess, but don't you want to go to like the real data set? They're like, there is no real data set. You're the data set. And then people go, oh my gosh. And so then, then we start to have meetings with larger groups of people, start to codify stuff. Usually at this point, um, there's some type of uh, formal or informal association with the United Nations or some United Nations affiliate group. And we come together, and then it just sort of becomes, hey, these folks are the default. They're, they're going to hold the data for us. And so that's, that's what we have in this case. In this case, this, is, uh, this, this particular effort trying to understand what was going on with disasters um, uh, got going in the, 70, in the 60s, actually, but got more codified in the 70s. And essentially, we have this um, data warehouse in Belgium that handles all this stuff, that, 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 that codifies, works to pull in data from all different regions of the world and have a standardized reporting method so that we can talk to, um, we can talk to uh, uh, one another with the same uh, standards, apples to apples. Uh, there's a little bit of a tweak happened in 2000 with how we define some of these things, but by and large, this is, this is, uh, this, this data is, um, People work at making this data be consistent. So this is our best holistic, globally speaking, data set for disasters. There might be some, some slightly better versions for, say, North America or Japan or something like that. But, but this is our, this is our, our go-to when we're, we're wondering, um, hey, how many disasters are there a year? Have disasters been increasing over time? Have they been getting more costly over time? This is the default that everybody... Uh, goes to. So you've logged on and uh, then let's see, you've logged on and then you just, I'm already logged on so you can't see the screen, but uh, you've logged on and then next you're going to, uh, uh, you know, click, now that you've registered, you're going to click login and you're going to want to go to the data screen. So then the data screen will look like this. There's a, there's a mapping tool and there's a data tool. You want to click the data tool. Yeah. So, so you guys uh, go to the website after you've after you've registered, refresh it, and then hit login. Cool. You log in, and then this is for the data side of things. This is the the option you're going to see. Actually, when you first look at it, it'll probably look like 
this. Um, sometimes there's some pop-ups that happen here. So sometimes if your browser has settings to block certain things, it might not, it might not visualize totally correct. So in this case, you'd want to turn off any of your pop-up blockers if you have those, or use a different browser. Okay, so let's have a look up here. So we have, first on the left, we have three different categories. We have natural, that would be a volcano, right? We have technological, that would be, say, a oil spill, right? Um, or we have complex disasters. Complex disasters... And this started to come in a little bit in, in the stuff you guys were typing in last week for our, our media survey, our, our news story survey. Some people were like, uh, it's about landslides, it's about volcanoes. Other people were like, this is about landslides and volcanoes, right? Or, or hurricanes and an oil spill, right? So um, increasingly what we're seeing is one of these quote-unquote disasters, one of these quote-unquote types of disasters leads directly or very quickly, indirectly, to another disaster. Like the classic one would be an earthquake leads to a tsunami, or a volcano leads to a tsunami. So some things are, are pretty frequently linked together. Others are like the oil spill in Peru. Just because we have a tsunami doesn't mean we get an oil spill. But but in that case, the oil spill directly, or the uh, excuse me, the the tsunami, the tsunami, the volcano directly caused a tsunami. The tsunami directly led to the oil spill in South America. So that would be an example of a complex disaster. So multiple different things playing out. Um, and so, uh, so for purposes of today, we want to see all of those. So what I would do is I would, and, and note that if you wanted to get down into this, I could click this and I could, I could do the sub subcategories of things. But I'm just going to pick, click, click, click. I'm going to click all of those. So I have all the, all the uh, categories selected. And then... I'm going to pick, so you could pick all these and download it. Um, it the, the little warning will come up and say, hey, dude, we host this for the planet. Are you sure you want to suck all this data down? Because this sort of takes a little bit of computer time. And it's fine if you want to. But they're just trying to make sure that people aren't frivolously downloading all the data all the time because that, that will eat up their server space. Um, so uh, uh, I'll show you guys your groups in a second. But, but basically... If I'm, if I'm Asia, I'll just click Asia, and then here's this, this time range. So for our activity, we want the full data set. So this is from 1900 to now. Obviously, we're, we're doing this lab activity in 2022. We haven't been a full year. So when you do your graphing, only graph up to 2021, right? Obviously, with real data being the way real data is, sometimes... Not everybody finishes on January 31st and gets it in on January 1st. So, so um, the data, this is a, a living database. So people are constantly updating, revising, fixing, trimming, whatever. So whenever you do query a database for this or any other class project, it's also a good idea, best practice, to note what you know, the date and time that you download. I downloaded it on this date at this time. Oftentimes there, uh, not always, but oftentimes there'll also be something about a version. This is, this is version 315 of the database or something. So we can reference it. And if there's some question, right, if, if my figures don't exactly match up with this other person, oh, okay, that's why. That they had a slightly different version of the data than I had, right? If we have the same exact version of the data and they had a different, uh, different number than I did, say, with our analysis, that, that, something, that tells us something. Uh, okay, so then you're going to download this. This is going to come out as a CSV, CSV or text file, those two types are the most common formats for these types of, of, of querying of database data uh, exercises. And then with that file, you can suck it up into Excel, you can suck it up into Google Sheets, you can suck it up into whatever, whatever uh, tabular data spreadsheet manipulator you'd like. Um, and so uh, uh, you would just hit download here and you'll start downloading the data. So let me let me show you guys how I've ran, not randomly, I just did it, I did it based on, let's see. Okay, here we go. So Jorge, John, Margaret, I got you in, doing Asia. Uh, L, Max, and Holly, I got you guys doing Africa. Uh, Brooke, Megan, Giselle, I have you doing the Americas. Alexis, Sam, and Jack, I have you guys doing Europe. 
And M, uh, Dylan, and Charlena have you guys doing Oceana. So, uh, so just tick the, your respective, uh, respective box there. And then hit download. And you'll get it. Yo. Yes, right. So, so if I wasn't clear, let me make sure I'm clear. So you guys should be having all three of these. We want all disaster categories. And then, and then if I'm assigned to Asia, I'll click that. If I'm assigned to Africa, I'll click that, vice versa. So these all three should be clicked. Only, you only need to click one of these on the, on the right, as whichever I said. And then it should be defaulted to this, but double check to make sure the thing on the bottom. So note right here, right? See this? I to make it easier to download, I could, I could only get it up to 1971 or whatever. So just make sure that your range is the full range of uh, time, the time period. Working for everybody? Okay. Another best practice you guys should do whenever we're doing these types of activities is download that, that raw data file and then save it, right? Make a copy of it and have your original file there that you don't ever touch and then let's mess with our copy version right so you can call it working or in progress or something that way if you accidentally hit clear or you deleted something or you transform something wrong like oh you can always go back to the data so we, we always want to have a, a pristine version of our of our uh, information okay working for everybody everybody, everybody, everybody it's downloaded or it's in the process of downloading everybody Okay, cool. All right, now, whenever we get data from, from here or anywhere else, the first step, after you make a copy of it, make sure, it's, make sure you know, you're not going to screw it up, uh, open it up, and let's just poke around, okay? Not do anything here, not turn anything in. I'm just asking, what's up with this, right? So let's make sure I understand what this thing is. Ideally, there's some important, helpful metadata, right, which is data about the data, that would tell us, hey, who, who pulled this together? What date was it pulled together? All, all that kind of jazz, right? Uh, and so in this case, uh, this thing has some data up here in the upper left. It says where it came from, you know, blah, blah, blah. It says when I, when I downloaded it just about one o'clock this morning, um, uh, so on and so forth. Usually, okay, so the way most of this data will be structured, this, a row, is usually um, one case or one replicate. So in the case of what we're talking about here, which are disasters, this will be one unique disaster event. Usually, there'll be some type of unique, potentially several, but at least one unique identifier number so that we can... We can, when I say what this is, and Charlene says what this is, and Sam says what this is, we're like, okay, this is this, yeah, we're talking about the same thing, right? Because sometimes, um, maybe not all the earthquakes are named, or maybe the earthquake near San Francisco, or earthquake near San Francisco on this date, or something, and you're like, wait, which one is which? So having the unique identifier is really important um, to make sure that we're all t um, communicating about the same event. So take, let's just take a, a minute or two here and just have you guys skim through the top. Now, so, so usually the header, the, 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 the topmost row, is the thing that's the variable name, is the, is, the, is the thing that's describing the data below it. Now, this might be super obvious. This might be a shorthand. So skim through there and have a look at it, and if there's anything there that doesn't make sense, you can go to the website and look, you can ask me, but, but but best practice is to go to the website and see if you can figure that out, right? So um, just skim through. This makes sense. This makes sense. This makes sense. What are the units here, right? It says cost or something. What's, but what's the, is it in U.S. dollars? You know, what's this? When it says size, is it talking square kilometers? Is it talking square miles? Is it talking acres? You know, so, so have a look through that. Let's take a minute or two. You guys just sort of flip through the data real quick and see if, if, it, if it makes sense to you. Cool, making sense of what we're seeing? You guys, this is uh, intelligible? You guys starting to get a sense of what the data is showing? 
Okay. All right. So the exercise this week is you're gonna you're gonna um, uh, start start summarizing this data. So the next the next step once we download a chunk of data. We're going to want to just look at it real quick, poke around. Hey, do I know what this is? Is this the right thing? Did I download the right thing? Is this totally weird? You know, can I understand it? Check. Okay, next is, hey, what's it look like? And so usually the what's it look like is how big is it? How short is it? How wide is it? Right? So things like the total number of things, things like uh, the total size of things and, and stuff of that nature, right? So we want to first, you know, do that one just so we understand the patterns, but then also a bit as a double check to make sure that it does sort of pass a smell test. That this, yeah, this seems right. There wasn't some weird erroneous data stuck in here, right? So if we had, if we were looking at, the, at for example, the number of disasters, over, you know, uh, in Asia over the last hundred years or whatever, we'd want to see maybe in 1900, 1910, maybe maybe there's not really good data from back then because we weren't really logging it. So maybe it's kind of up and down, up and down. But once we get to you know a little more recent times. We would expect there'd be some at least not constant, but at least some you know rough you know some some numbers of of disasters or or deaths or cost or whatever right you know every year. If all of a sudden all the data went down to zero for a decade, that would make us think ah something's wrong with this data between whatever 1970 1980 or something right. We for whatever reason we weren't logging data in Africa or in Oceania or whatever between you know that time period right so so summary data both helps us understand the pattern and also helps us do a, a sort of smell test to make sure the data seems to be basically be legit and so we'll do that but um, and so that's what the, the main activity of your of your um, lab activity is but but I just wanted to um, a pause for a second and spin to our, our next tool that we'll be using for this so the, so the first tool was online database, set up an account, query it, pull it in, and start to mess with it, right? The next tool is going to be to do some data visualization. So that there are, are def you are welcome for our class. You're welcome to use whatever data visualization tool you want, except for Excel. Do not use Excel, because Excel sucks for graphs. Excel is a fantastic tool for organizing data. For, for summarizing, for doing, you know, that kind of stuff. It's great. That's what it was created for as an accounting tool, basically. Um, but as far as visualizations, it's it's just lame. It's hard to make a, it's possible to make a professional figure from Excel, but it's very hard. It's way too hard. So I'm going to show you guys Plotly. I'm just going to default to describing Plotly, but know that you're more than welcome to use Tableau, R, whatever, whatever floats your boat, but not Excel. You can use Excel to manipulate your data, do your summaries and all this and that, but, but I want you to use a real robust platform for visualization. So I'll show you Plotly, and I want everybody to have a Plotly account, even if you decide to use, say, R or what have you. So one of our onboarding exercises where you guys were to have established your account, so hopefully everybody's done that, and you can just go and log in to Plotly Studio. And so, um, and so while you're doing that, I'll, I'll just say, so we started using this about eight, nine years ago. It was more of a standalone thing. Now it's become more of, a, of an enterprise type of thing. So, so we can still use it. You guys can still use it. But um, the main, inter main users are people other than us, people that have, like, say, a big business that are buying this for their whole business. So uh, this is free for you guys to use, but some of the functionality doesn't is it fully in existence. So, so um, when you save data, it has to be saved publicly. Whereas if you paid for an enterprise license, you could you could save it privately. Like if we were doing somebody's health records or whatever. Nothing we're going to be doing in our class is is sensitive data or or you know worrisome like that. So so it's all it's all good. It's not a problem. Um, so uh, this is this is Plotly, and um, I can come up here and do this. I can say create, and I can do various things. I can say create chart, and this is the if you've not played with this before, this is the the, the state space, and this is similar to many of our uh, graphing tools. So there's going to be a, a a data holding area, right? 
which looks like a spreadsheet. And there's going to be the, the visualization area. Different programs will do this slightly differently, but they almost all have that. Again, the default configuration of these systems is that row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5, those are the, the replicates or those are the elements we're going to be graphing with each column being a, a particular variable. Now, with Plotly, we can just type the data in ourselves. Right, and so on and so forth. I can come up here and click on this dude and, uh, and rename my header so I can call this, uh, I don't know, um, year or something. I don't know what the hell that means. And uh, this could be um, volume or something. I can also, and this is the one you'll mostly use, once you get your data set ready to visualize, for example, I'm going to recommend that you guys make another clean data sheet with just the parts that you want to visualize. You can bring your whole data sheet in, but that, your whole data file, but that sometimes it's slow and it's bogged down and things. So, so my, the best practice is going to be to take your raw data, uh, uh, you know, tweak it, manipulate it, create your summary of things you want to visualize. In this case, one of the things you can do is how many disasters happen per year, right? So have, so we'll get that. I would copy that into a new worksheet, a new, a new, a new file. That's just that, and save that so it's nice and clean, simple, easy, fast. And then once I have that, upload that. And so whether you're uploading the full data set, which will take a while, or you know, your, your, your um, subsampled part or your manipulated part of the data, you can just hit import, and just like you'd import any old file, you can bring it in. So you can manually type stuff in, you can import stuff. Either way, you end up with this data file here. And then uh, each program calls things slightly different names. In this case, these guys call a graph, they call it a trace. And so I would just come over here, and I would hit this button that says trace, and I'd say trace, and what? I can do a scatter plot. I can I could do all kinds of, of things for this. Uh, if I was doing something like year-to-year -year change, maybe I would do a line graph, but I could pick anything. And then for my X, I would pick, for example, year, and my Y would be volume. And... That should be working. Yeah, it's just the, 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 this, uh, my, the way, way my, my screen is to, to record for you guys, it's getting a little squished. But, um, but there you go, so here, here's, my, here's my figure, right? Now, the thing with Plotly, and increasingly many of these tools, the old people like me, we made graph, we, when we generated graphs, we either did them by hand or we did them with computer programs that were designed to create a static output, a PDF, a JPEG, something of that nature, right? The new generation of visualization tools like this um, are designed to be online. So, um, so it's designed to be able to be embedded in your blog, embedded on a web page, what have you. You can also save it. You can also export it as a stagnant figure, as a JPEG, as a PNG, as a PDF, or what have you. Um, but that's, that's sort of a, a secondary feature, right? So it's all good, but just, just realize that. So, so um, I would do this, and I can come into here. All these things are changeable. Style, uh, and, and this will take you the, this first exercise. You should spend some time. Spend an hour or two playing around, and, and there, there's, there's a million different things you can change. The thickness of the line, the color of the line, uh, uh, you know, all that, everything, everything you see is configurable. Um, this particular program, everything is configurable with these graphic user interfaces, these pull downs, these tabs. You can also do command line. Other things like R, you can do command line. But I think is a, if you guys haven't had much experience with that, uh, it, it's a little easier to start with these with these graphic 
user interface uh, uh, tools as a first step. Um, so, so, so definitely play around with this, mess around. We're always going to be producing a professional figure. Okay, so that's going to be axes labeled. That's going to be variables named, articulated, um, so on and so forth. So everything we're going to turn in here, professional, 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 professional. Um, in the case of this guy, since for, for, for me, for our class, you guys are typically, for our lab activities, you're typically going to be submitting uh, a, a, a file, right? Upload, okay, so do this lab activity and then upload your figures, right? Let me see your figures. And so you're going to want to come to export. And well, first, first you probably need to save it. And when I do this, I can, I can name, you know, I could call this uh, uh, EM Gazoon Data 2022 or whatever the heck I want to name it. The grid is what the data file is. So I could potentially make many figures from this one data file, right? And so uh, uh, what will happen is um, you just need, these things will default to private and you'll hit save and it'll go, cannot do that. You do not have this. Well, I'll show you what happens if you try that. It'll go, oh, do you want to upgrade? Yeah, yeah, no, right? So I just want to either, either just hit this save file publicly or or just come up here and, and manually make them be public. Oh, yeah. So, I, I, so I, I've filled up my file. So I, I have to delete some things to, to uh, uh, in a second to graph it, uh, to save it. Okay, so then um, what I can do is I can hit image. And once I delete some of those other files and it's saved, I can save it as JPEG, PNG, what, what have you. For us, generally speaking, unless I say differently for our lab assignments, I want one file, right? I want to just be able to download, look at, you know, Holly's, look at Charlene's, look at look at uh, everybody's, and just kind of boom, 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 boom. And so having a bunch of files is is problematic for me. So your default should be to export this as a PNG. So, well, let me say this again. Um, if we have multiple figures needed, which we probably mostly will. PNG1, PNG2, PNG3, whatever, and then go to Google Docs, Word, what have you, and embed those individual photos in that one document, and then export that as a PDF. So they're all together in one unified file. That's what I, that's what I want, as opposed to a bunch of individual things uploaded. Cool? Okay, the last one is, um, while it's not super important, you'll see when you go to save images from this uh, tool, it'll say one times two times or three times. Generally do it, save it as two times, which will make it just like twice as big a file. That makes it a little bit higher resolution. And so um, sometimes every once in a while, if, if we're tweaking the, the variable, sometimes one time makes it a little bit, not quite the most highest resolution depending. So by doing two times, that's plenty of resolution. And that once we shrink it down, it'll be fine to look at. So there we go. So that's, so that's, so we're, we're, playing with data collection, playing with manipulating data, and then we're doing visualization. Again, you do not have to use Plotly, but if you don't have anything else to use, use Plotly. Um, uh, okay, uh, then the last thing to say about this, and I'll let you guys start playing around, is to go ahead and jump on our, um, if you jump on our, uh, the module that just launched when class started, um, this is what we. This is what you guys are doing. So you're each making uh, two figures. One should be showing the trends in disaster deaths. This is this is to 2020. Make it to 2021. Make it to last year. So 1900 to 2021. And the trend in disaster costs, which should be in U.S. dollars, from 1900 to 2021. So. What I want to see is the trend over the last uh, 120 years or so of people killed by disasters and the costs of disasters. Obviously, this isn't for the whole planet because you just have you're just responsible for your one region. So this would be the the number of folks killed and the cost in Africa, the number of folks killed and cost in the Americas, the number of people, etc. 
Make sense? Okay. To do that, um, you're going to need to do some manipulation of the data, right? And so I have some videos embedded in here to, to show you guys how. Um, uh, and so just as a reminder, we can't just grab everything, right? Because if we, if we grab, so here we go. Here's 1900 and here's 1900. So in this case, on my data set, um, <laughs> this is the whole world. So one is Africa, one is Asia. Maybe this is a bad example. Let's look at this one here. So this one is in the Americas, right? So this first event, can you guys see this okay? So here's an event that happened in uh, uh, an earthquake in 1902 and then a volcano in 1902, right? So I have to be able to, to merge these guys together, right? So some years, there might be one disaster in my area. Maybe some years, luckily, hopefully, maybe there's zero. Maybe some years there's 50, right? So we need to be able to summarize that. So if we're having on one axis the time, and the other axis, the response, in one case it's dollars, in one case it's deaths, we would need to have those summed for that particular year. Does that make sense? And so, um, so I have some, some uh, there's, there's several ways to do this, but I have, a, I have like a starter default way that'll work all the time um, using Excel on my how-to videos, like a little 10 minute uh, thing. But basically it involves um, uh, creating a template at the bottom of the data set and then using some sum if functions and copy and pasting those those functions down. So it's not not a very complex thing, but but um, uh, have at it. I'll, I'll turn you guys loose. So start working on generating your figures. This isn't due till Friday. If you want to finish it today, that could be cool. But uh, realize you have till Friday. But start taking a whack at it. And when you guys start to get stuck or not sure how to proceed, uh, yell at me or raise your hand, and I'll I'll help you. And also talk to your buds. Your buds can help you too. Awesome possum, awesome. charging people.